Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Drunk Turkey uh, Mystery Show. Uh, today, we have a little bit different type of show. We're going to try to put some light on a case of a missing Cornelius, North Carolina girl, 11-year-old Madalena Kujikari. We're going to be putting some light on this case, talk about it, talk about this missing person, and and hopefully maybe perhaps somebody listening will see this little girl and and uh, we can find her and bring her to her family. Alongside with me, as always, is Jaime G and Big Blue. Jaime, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Pretty pretty sad situation that's going on out there in North Carolina right now with this 11-year-old girl. I completely agree. I completely agree. How about yourself, Big Blue? How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Just trying to stay warm. You know, we got Arctic blast coming through and making Texas colder than it should be. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So just kind of give everybody a rundown of what's going on and, and who we're talking about. Um, we are talking about currently is 11 year old Madalena Kojikari. Uh, let me bring up a photo of her so you guys can see what she looks like. This is her young little girl, 11 years old, last seen in November. This is a this is a crazy story, y'all. Um, wasn't reported until December what, 15th. Went mm -hmm. missing in late November. Uh, still missing. We're going to try to help find this little girl. Um, so let's break it down. Um, Coach Corey, Madalena was last seen on November 23rd, but she wasn't reported missing until December 15th. Her mother, Diana Kojikari, and her stepfather, Christopher Palameter, have both been charged with failure to report the disappearance of a child to law enforcement. Apparently, this is a law in North Carolina. If you do not um, report a juvenile missing or somebody missing, then you can get in trouble. Right now, they are under arrest, and we'll get into all their speculation and how they fall into this case as well. It's actually a felony one, is it, on the, on the report? Yeah, this is a significant felony. Um, it's a good law. It's a good law, man. I, I oh, yeah. agree. I agree. You know, there's a lot of um, Casey Anthony type of feel to this case. Uh, wouldn't you guys kind of agree to this? Definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So, so let's kind of break it down. Let's go through the timeline. Mandalina uh, Kojikari's mother, Diana Kojikari, told police she last saw her daughter on the night of November 23rd. According to an arrest report, um, basically, uh, she stated to police that um, – the morning after the 23rd is when she noticed that her child was missing. She stated that her and her um, step, her, her husband, the stepfather, um, Christopher Palomito, had got into an argument and that he had left early that morning to Michigan. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, basically she left to Michigan the next day, uh, that morning, they began to, I guess, ask each other. Or she asked him where where her daughter was. He stated that she had him, and they kind of are blaming each other. But nobody ever reported anything to police. Right? It yeah. wasn't until the school resource office at Madalena School, which is uh, Bailey Middle School, went to the residence uh, to do, I guess, like a welfare check on yeah. December twelfth, right? And uh, they left the truancy packet at at the residence. The following day, on the December 13th, Deanna Kojikari called the school counselor and uh, referencing the truancy packet. And um, and she said she would come to meet with Madalena. She then went to the school on December 15th without Madalena and reported her daughter missing. Um, when asked why she did not report Madalena missing till now, uh, Deanna stated she was worried about a conflict between her husband, Christopher Palomero, and herself. And yeah. so this little girl went missing for a few days. Apparently, basically, long story short, uh, father, stepfather and um, the stepfather and the mother are claiming that. Um, what do you call it? Uh, they were basically blaming each other as far as the disappearance goes and. This is the mother. This is Diana Kojikari. And this is the stepfather, Christopher Palameter. Um, what do you guys basically, uh, what, are, what are your initial thoughts on that? Oh, man, like it's 
it's so weird that she said that she would want a conflict between them, like you know, her and um, her husband, and mm -hmm. like, where's the, where's the concern for the for the daughter? You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. One hundred percent. I completely agree with that. What about you, Big Blue? What are your first initial thoughts of the case? It's kind of crazy, man. Like, I have two daughters. If one goes missing, I'm going to go look that day, that 10 minutes that they're gone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It took a truancy officer to go to their house half a month later for her to finally say, oh, she's missing. There's something really suspicious about that. Definitely. Now, now this is the uh, this is Mad Madalena's home. This is uh, where they reside. It looks like a very upscale, up suburban type of um residential area in my opinion this is not a uh low class poverty type of neighborhood mm -hmm. but um correct me if i'm wrong these uh this family here were um were immigrants is that not, is that correct do you do you know where they uh, immigrated from um big blue uh yes um sorry. i don't know Trying to remember, you caught me off guard. <laughs> I think I think they were from Moldova. Oh, uh, that's correct. A Soviet Republic in Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, just to kind of go over a little bit as to what the parents are arrested for, they've both been arrested and charged with failure to report the disappearance of a child to law enforcement. North Carolina law says it's a class one felony for a parent or any other person providing care or supervision to someone younger than the age of 16 years old. Uh, to knowingly or wantfully fail to report the disappearance of a child to law enforcement. The law defines the disappearance of a child as when a parent or a person providing supervision of a child does not know the location of the child and has not had contact with the child for a 24 hour period. And so they went well beyond that 24 hour period, clearly. Yeah. Both have already made court appearances. Kojikari's bond is uh, set to $250,000 on her initial appearance. And, um, that the judge said if she uh, were to make bill, she'd be required to be using a uh, monitoring device. Mm -hmm. You know, big question as far as like we've mentioned it before. Why wasn't Kojikari reported missing sooner? You know, Diana and Kojikari, the mom, said that she didn't initially tell anybody about the daughter missing because she was afraid of the conflict with her husband. Uh, the couple fought the night Madalena was last seen. The records say Palomita left from Michigan in the morning. Diana Kachikori says that the, she first noticed, that's when she first noticed that she was missing, right? Yeah. Um, police records include that they uh, discussed with each other several times about uh, Madalena being missing, but didn't alert to law enforcement at any time. They were adamant that they did not know where Madalena could be. Mm. And so <sighs> this is very sad, very very alarming information you yeah. know and i understand you may not know where uh you know you don't want a conflict and there's an argument going there but you have to contact authorities and try yeah. to figure out where your kids are i mean yeah. this is it's insane and so police have done their due diligence they found uh this video here this is from november 21st this is the last time that um she was actually seen um yeah. and reported to have been seen and so let's uh, take a look at this real quick. Um, this uh, cool. November 21st, right? This, yeah, November this. 21st is two days before they reported her. And this is her ride here walking oh. off the school bus. Uh, this is at 4.59 p.m. Um, this is two days before she's allegedly gone missing. Yeah. Right. So, so in this she just does she look nervous to you guys? She's playing with her hair a lot. She's kind of holding on to her bangs. Mm. Uh, but you know, none of that kind of stand out to you or anything. Not really. Um, just an, she looks innocent, man. Like super innocent, you no know, super innocent little girl. I agree. It's just it's just sad. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Especially like seeing the one of the last videos of you know of this girl that went missing. You know what I mean? You don't you don't we don't know what happened to her, and the parents are not helping in in, in that in that in that. Um, you know, in that case, you know, they're trying to blame each other. And it's, right. it's just it's just crazy. No, yeah, for sure. For sure. And it, it's it's very suspicious. 
a mm-hmm. lot of things starts going into your brain as I say, uh, Casey Anthony, we're going to find some remains, you know, then you have the fact that the stepdad went to Michigan, took a nine hour drive. Um, yes. Apparently, according to the mother, she assumed or thought at one point or at least at that point that uh, Mandalena was in the care of the stepdad going to Michigan. And, mm-hmm. you know, they were just kind of bickering between them two. Yeah. Uh, even though uh, Mandalena's stepdad apparently had told her that she, he wasn't take he hadn't taken her there. Uh, to me, I'm not going to lie. And it's just speculation or anything like that. Or everything like that is just speculation. Allegedly, we're not accusing anybody of anything but it almost sounds like a trafficking type of situation it's possible it's possible um sure seems like there's foul play involved i'll tell you that there's something heinous going on in this situation Mm -hmm. that's for dang sure um there's been a report here and um it goes um basically uh this is from me I'm, i'm not sure how yeah, I don't. I'm not familiar with this uh, publication. Uh-huh. Uh, Meoww.com. They reported that Madeline Kojikari's family was reportedly seen lighting a, a fire and torching couch cushions and other items that burned for days in their backyard. According, this occurred soon after the days she disappeared, but before she was reported missing. So, uh-huh. apparently, um, some once. News broke out that this little girl was missing. Neighbors came forward saying that they uh, somebody was burning couch push, couch cushions there. And so, yeah. um, red flag. Yeah, for sure. Especially, for especially, sure. especially in the in the community that's you know a little bit upscale. Um, you don't hear, um, you know, people in upscale neighborhoods. Uh, at least I don't think so. You know, burning couch cushions in the back of their house. And I agree. HOA would not allow that. It looks like it's an HOA kind of place. Oh, definitely. 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 And I think that's what ended up being why somebody called in. Mm -hmm. It it says here, though Cornelius Fire Chief Gary Barbie confirmed the flames. He did not give any inner details of the same. He stated, I can't speak on that now because of the investigation, reported Mm -hmm. the outlet. He remains, uh, it still remains chaotic. Why the girl's mother, Diana Karji, reported her daughter missing two weeks at, um, two weeks after the fire. All right. So um, the police, along with the FBI, so the FBI is investigating this. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm assuming is because of the uh, immigrant status of the mom and, and the fact that the uh, stepfather traveled um, to Michigan. So he left the, the state and this is something that potentially could be seen as a interstate uh, interstate type of thing. So it'd be a federal case. Yeah. Um, so this was from the Daily Mail. A neighbor who witnessed the search uh, of the police and FBI uh, told the Daily Mail that they took all kinds of samples from the fire pit area. He said, I guess you're trying to figure out if they burned anything of substance there. It's a gross feeling to know something like this happened in your neighborhood. It's very suspicious that the mother didn't report the girl missing for two weeks. And that's from a neighbor. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, another neighbor opinion. If you don't know the context that a girl is missing, it's kind of a nothing burger to call at that time. It was more of a fire safety or a permit type of issue, according to reports. Mandalina was seen on November 21st getting off the school bus and was unseen since November 23rd. And so basically what that tells me when she says that a nothing burger and that it's, you know, they called because of the fire safety, the HOA type of situation is basically yeah. what I'm assuming is why they called. And they called the, uh, the, the fire department and the fire department went out there and confirmed that there was a fire and flames and, mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that so that's that's crazy yeah yeah i mean i think the the, the reason the, the reason they mentioned that is because at that time they didn't know right that the little girl was missing right exactly they had no idea that the little girl was missing and now that they know it was like oh it stuck out like a sore thumb mm-hmm. the activity they were doing so this 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 article further says on the day of madalena's disappearance diana had argued with her husband uh, this 60 year old was angry and left for Michigan. However, he returned home November 26. So apparently he was there for from November 23rd, returned home to 26. Mm-hmm. And so you would assume that, you know, given the length of drive that it was that he, you know, whatever business he had was basically from the 24th to the 25th of November. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. They uninformed him about the child missing. However, they took almost three weeks to report the child, even though she told him and asked him about the child being missing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the police department has searched the nearby lakes, rivers without finding anything. They've searched the nearby areas, which includes Lake Cornelius. And that's kind of where we're sitting at right now. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of police presence at the house um, here recently. Um, and I can we'll, we'll look at this article. A large police presence was seen at the home of the missing year, missing 11 year old girl from Cornelius on Wednesday, which would have been the 21st. About a dozen officers arrived to the home of Madalena Korjikori around 5 p.m. The girl was last seen November 23rd, but was not reported missing until December 15th. And so, you know, the police department has been out there. Um, Authorities previously visited a home earlier, but in the investigation and found an area in the kitchen blocked off with plywood, according to documents obtained by WBTV. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I believe the step that said that he was um, fixing an apartment, a separate apartment. Mm. That's all. That's all the the details he gave out. Wow. Mm-hmm. When asked about the wooded area, Palmer alleged he told officers that he was going to make a separate apartment. <laughs> there you go. On Wednesday, police could could be seen through the house windows, potentially taking photographs of inside the home. Among vehicles present was a crime scene search truck. Madalena weighs approximately 90 pounds and was last seen wearing jeans, pink, purple, and white Adidas shoes, and a white T-shirt and jacket. The uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation and State Bureau of Investigation have also joined in the search for the missing child. Do you think because the FBI is involved, it makes it a the homicide case? I think that the FBI involved means that they think that something interstate happened through the state because if it was even if it was a kidnapping or a um um an assault to the extreme level right i, I don't <laughs> we try yeah. not to get demonetized right and so so but more than likely this type of content will be demonetized so if you guys can do us a favor and hit that like and hit that subscribe button uh and get the uh, algorithm going that way we can get this content as far out as we possibly can and to get to as many people as possible. That way we can help find this little girl. And so um, back to what I was saying. Uh, what if the uh, FBI is involved for a uh, trafficking ring? You know what I mean? Maybe mm-hmm. these parents are involved. In this yeah, if it's trafficking, if it's something that he went past um, state lines or cross state lines with, and mm-hmm. this was a um, some kind of crime that went between state lines or through state lines, and the FBI would get involved in that situation. Yeah, because like if 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 this is a homicide case, which I which I hope it's not, which I hope right. is not right. Um, um, the, the the miles he traveled, he traveled like well, five hundred and plus miles, one hundred and fifty plus miles, uh, yeah. one way, and then five hundred and fifty something plus miles on the way back. Which means if this was one of those cases. There's a lot of, lot of ground to cover. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, there's so much different area. There's w- probably a lot of lakes, rivers, creeks, wooded mm-hmm. areas all the way along that direction. And mm-hmm. with this winter blast that just pulled through, uh, it's going to be under snow. It's yeah. it's going to mm-hmm. be difficult. Yes. Yep. And so since then, the family, um, extended family of Mandalina. Uh, has come forward and, and written a letter, and this was put out there. And uh, these are, this is not from the mother or the stepmother. The, it doesn't say who it's from, but it does. You know, the report is um, from the news that it is from the extended family. This is also reported from the uh, Cornelius Police Department. So we'll read through it, and then then we'll talk about this letter that the family sent out. This is uh, dated December twenty second, twenty twenty two. We as a family are devastated and absolutely heartbroken to learn that Madalena is missing. We love Madalena and are shocked by the circumstances. This is something no child or family should ever have to endure. Our family is doing everything we know to do to support the efforts to find Madalena and bring her home. We are and continue to have hope and positivity in this difficult time and pray that she is found safe very soon. 
We know and greatly appreciate that the local, state, national, and online communities have come together to share flyers, offer positive support, hold prayer vigils, support law enforcement, and are doing everything possible to find and bring Madalena safely home. We're also appreciative of all the efforts, endless hours, and boots on the ground of the local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies involved with the, with the same goal. Madalena is a beautiful, smart kid and loving 11 year old girl with greatness in her future. We are desperate to find her right now. She needs all of our help. We ask you for your continued positive support and sharing far and wide the posters and pictures of Madalena each and every day share maybe one step closer to finding her. If you believe you have seen Madalena or have any information related to the whereabouts, please contact your local law enforcement agency or the Cornelius NC Police Department and come forward with this information. Anything may help. Our family would like to express sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for support. Our family will continue to do everything we know and learn to do for Madalena's safe return. Home blessings. So that's from the extended family uh, who are completely devastated at this point right now because of the, uh, the continued absence or missing um, you know, of Madalena. Yeah. And again, guys, this is what she looks like. Uh, she was, if, if, if the stepfather took her to Michigan, there's a few States in between Michigan and North Carolina. Um, if you've seen this little girl around Thanksgiving holidays, while you were in traveling at a gas station, things of that nature, please mm -hmm. report that to the, um, Cornelius police department. And so, and, you know, and we'll put this out there now, you know, anyone with information about the whereabouts of Madalena Kajikori is asked to contact Cornelius Police Department at 704-892-7773. And this is what she looks like. This is a pretty recent um, picture of her. Um, if you had, you know, perhaps maybe seen her father, her stepfather, I mean, this is what he looks like. Um, he would have been traveling to Michigan. At this point, I'm not sure what state or city, uh, what city in Michigan he went to. We try to find that, and at this point, we couldn't locate that information. But his name was Christopher, or is Christopher Palameter, and this would have been around Thanksgiving. What throws me off is like, and this, and this, is this, this is a rest mugshot. Either he was mm -hmm. crying or he's on something, man. His eyes are red as bloodshot. You know what I mean? All... Yeah, he, he's probably crying, man. I mean, you, you gotta. His life is, is you know. There's not very many um, scenarios that can come out of this without it ending up with him and probably behind bars. Even if this little girl was found safe or whatever the case may be, you know, the neglect and the inability to contact the police to report yeah. this is going to end him up in jail. What's it called? Um, I, had, I had a question, Danny. Yeah. Uh, to you, um, since you've been in law enforcement and uh, what's it called? I was going to ask you, how come they gave a bond uh, of 250 Two hundred and fifty thousand for the mom and a hundred and a hundred thousand for the dad. Why, 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 why is that different? Do you think you they will give the same type of bond on each? I would assume, but you also have to look at the actions of the mom. She uh, she was contacted by the by the school district. She contacted the school district back. She told them that she would go to the school with Mandalina, and then at that point, once she's arrived, she indicated that she was missing. Uh, the stepfather um, stated he didn't know where she was at also. And even though it was reported to him by the step by the mom that she mm -hmm. was missing, it, it was, I guess, the uh, at the end of the day, the responsibility of the mother, perhaps. Yeah. But I would have thought it would have probably been somewhere the same. If not, yeah. you know, I find you, it odd as well. Do you I think, think it's just charges on the mom? What's that? I'm sorry. I said, do you think they might have put a, a, some extra charge in there for the mom? Maybe, but I think that those charges would have been indicated in the uh, in the probable cause affidavit for why they were arrested. And so far, it's been, I think, for the same thing. Okay. It's just I think that, you know, you look at the mother's actions, it seems and it appears that, you know, um, that she kind of went an extra step not to report the child mm -hmm. by getting the truancy pack, calling the school the next day and then mm -hmm. informing them that she would be going to the school with the little girl. Um, yeah. It just seems like maybe perhaps she was prolonging the search of the child, oh, okay. you know, when she had an opportunity to. And so maybe that perhaps could have been why 
Um, but uh, that's a good question. I have what, no idea why it would have been. What, what, what do you think? Maybe maybe they, they consider her like a flight risk? Maybe. I think both of them would be, to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, and, and you look at the type of home that they have, uh, not indicating that that means that they're wealthy or not, but you can, if they're, if they're not renting that house, let's just say they do own the house, mm. and then they can use that as some type of collateral to get out. I mean, they only have to come up with 10% in the majority of the cases. And so yeah. if you have, you know, a house and with the recent inflation of houses in the market that's gone up, um, if they've owned this house for, you know, a little bit more than a couple of years now, there's probably some value in there where they can mortgage off or get a, uh, you know, a um, like a second mortgage and come up with, if it's twenty if it's $250,000, come up with $25,000 uh, using that extra mortgage to get out. And so... Um, Right now, there hasn't been a body, there hasn't been remains, there hasn't been anything other than the fact that this little girl was missing and the family and these parents didn't report them. Mm -hmm. There's some suspicious stuff and circumstances around it. Don't get me wrong, yeah. the fire, the fact that they weren't reporting them, all that kind of adds up and leads up and points in one direction. And it's not yeah, a good one. Definitely, definitely. It's eerie, it's eerily close as the Casey Anthony I concur. Uh, situation. And now, and, and and I hope it doesn't end up the same. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. That that that's that would be that was a tragic situation. And and I, and again, I hope it doesn't end up the same as well. Yeah. Uh, I hope so too. It does not end that way, but it's looking that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, my theory is they they probably gave her more time because she's a custody. Like she's she has custody of the child, and the stepdad doesn't, and she should. She had more responsibility to report it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 absolutely possible as well. And so, again, uh, we want to tell everybody, anybody with information about the whereabouts of Madeline Kajikari is asked to contact the Cornelius Police Department. Their information will be in the description below their phone number. If you're listening in and want to you know, give them a call, it's going to be 704-892-7773. Um, do you guys have any last questions or, or comments on this before we let everybody go? Well, I, I don't have a, I have one thing that I want to comment is, um, I know I brought it up on the other night's show and then I wanted to bring it up again today. We had a uh, somewhat similar, not, not similar case, but we also had a missing child go missing here in San Antonio. Uh, and it's been a year since she's gone missing and the police just released the footage of her playing on a playground, that was the last known footage of her where she went missing from that playground. So her name was Linda Sarder Kill. Maybe we'll do that case next, try to bring some some light to, to that family too. The, star, the little girl's been missing for a year. She should be five years old by now. Oh, wow. That's, wow. that's scary and it's unfortunate. We have so many things that are going on here nearby that we might be covering and touching on. Um, we're still going to be covering the Idaho four. We're still covering the Delphi case, you know, when that starts to go forward mm -hmm. and we'll be looking into Madalena Kojikari as this case, uh, continues. And we hope that it comes with a, uh, a positive outcome with her safe return to her extended family. Uh, I wouldn't want her to return to her, her mom or stepdad. That's no, my definitely. personal opinion. I uh, want to thank everybody watching. Thank you for hitting that like and subscribe button and ringing that notification bell. And I want to thank our members. Um, we had a newest member come in, Susan G. Thank you for joining the club. Thank you for joining the turkeys. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, guys, with the Drunk Turkey Show, we appreciate everybody out there. Please be safe. If you have any information in this regarding this missing child, please contact your local authorities or the Cornelius Police Department. You have a good night. Thanks.